Well, how y'all doing again? I'm uh, going to call this kitchen table electronics repair. And what we're going to do is we're going to fix a, a decent uh, thrift store turntable and t make it as good as new. Um, I bought this one because uh, I knew it was it was a modest one, but I knew it would treat my records as, as gently as a really high-end one, and I, and I knew I only needed uh, to send away for one uh, real component. So I'll just kind of walk you through everything I, I'll do to fix this one up. Uh, as far as references go, you can even find at thrift stores, you can find books like this. And especially one really good one is maybe one like this. This was the uh, like a Time Life uh, series book. But I'll, I'll just I'll show you some methods and things that uh, you will find in books like this. What tools you would need uh, to fix fix an item like this. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, as far as cleaning goes, with a, a plastic uh, case like this, it's a painted plastic, so you don't want to use any kind of solvents. Or anything, um, I just use like a, a mostly just some warm water, very gently cleaning, uh, maybe some cotton swabs, uh, maybe just a just a tiny tiny bit of like a blue uh, grease cutting dishwasher detergent, and you can just wipe it up, wipe it off really nice. Uh, optional thing you can do, you could take some household oil, and you could put uh, maybe just a drop uh, on the spindle here. Uh, but it's not really not necessary, but it it uh, it will help uh, minimize wear. As far as the platter goes, you want to get rid of any residue. You can see that little residue there from the belt. You can just take uh, rubbing alcohol, and you can rub that off really good. Uh, make sure it's dry. These are some of the parts. Um, parts I already had were the cartridge and the needle. Uh, this is the head shell. It's just an inexpensive style head shell. This is a belt. I ordered this from an online uh, retailer. Um, usually a belt will run you about $10 in shipping and everything the total will run you maybe $15. Um, this is something I showed in a previous video. It kind of simplifies the process of, uh, of uh, setting the uh, counterweight. And I'll kind of demonstrate that a little bit. Um, usually if, if, you, if you actually have to buy a, a replacement cartridge, you'll usually get enough hardware um, to install it on different styles of head shells or tone arms. And a lot of times they'll even include a, a, a specialty small uh, screwdrivers like this. Although, you can see all the parts I have here. <laughs> it's kind of a little messy, but uh, anything I would possibly need for, for working on stuff like this, I have. Uh, the rubber mat, uh, pretty much the same thing. I just kind of washed it very gently with warm water and just a, maybe a drop of dish detergent. I didn't scrub it or anything. I just kind of run my hands around it, trying to work any years of... Uh, uh, grit or contamination off of it and just let it air dry overnight and it looks as good as new. Okay, I got the uh, cartridge mounted on the end of the tone arm and I unscientifically but essentially had to, I moved it as far forward in the slot as I could uh, so there's a pretty good chance that it's probably aligned uh, as best as as can be with this style of a of a head shell. Um, a lot of times you'll you'll buy a, a cartridge and you will get a tool like this. And you can see the logo there. This is what is known as a a, a head shell pro a protractor, and what it does if you have a straight a head shell, you you will be able to uh, mount your cartridge and you will be able to line it up uh, with the edge edge of there. You'll see that little indent there. It's sort of an aid for for lining it up. But in this case I don't have that style of a straight uh, head shell. So uh, I, I'm pretty sure I, this is this is going to work well. 
Another thing that you will get uh, with a, a cartridge is one of these. This is a counterweight and you may or may not need to use it. In this case I, I'm pretty sure I won't and, and another reason why I did not install it is uh, the, uh, the, the bolts I had were, were basically just long enough uh, to use those uh, round nuts to, to fasten this on. So I'm, I'm sure I'm pretty safe uh, not having to use this, but uh, just in case, like everything, uh, it, it helps to uh, save uh, spare parts. Uh, just to give you an idea as to uh, some of the wires you have to deal with, these are probably the finest wires in consumer electronics equipment. And uh, as you can see, I'm showing a coin to show you the the scale and this is probably kind of a, a half-baked <laughs> literally way of soldering but I I had to solder these new little uh, pins onto those existing those two wires because the uh, other pins were were uh, not there they were either removed or they got ripped off or something when someone must have taken the the cartridge out so you sometimes have to do things like that, unconventional things, to, to fix something to make it right. Okay, as you can see, I've uh, attached that head shell. You want to put it on, on the tone arm. I put it on as far as I could fit it and realize it was on all the way. Then I, then I tighten the set screw, uh, sn snug on, but not really too tight. You don't want to damage anything. Then I had to take anneal nose pliers and I had to put on the uh, plugs on the wires there, or on the pins I should say. Uh, then after that I, uh, I pushed on the stylus onto the whole uh, cartridge. Then I took the counterweight, uh, slipped it on the back, and then I uh, experimented by twisting, twisting the weight uh, forward and backward to get the the amount of tracking force I wanted and I usually uh, I try to get uh, anywhere from a, from a gram and a half to two grams anything less than I think a gram and a half unless you have a super high quality uh, turntable and cartridge uh, is adequate uh, anything less usually than a record may, may have a tendency to, to uh, skip out of the grooves easily uh, but I'm going to measure this here. It looks like about a, about a gram right now. Let's try that again. Okay, maybe about a, there we go, about almost a gram and a half. And then what you do is usually that facing, um, you just adjust that to read the amount of force that, that you really have so that you can always adjust it later and, and have an accurate uh, reading. Okay, now we're going to uh, install our belt and platter, and before you do that, uh, at the same time that you you clean uh, with rubbing alcohol the, the actual facing area for the belt and put the belt on around, you also want to uh, take a swab and, and clean your roller really well with rubbing alcohol also. Okay, I put the platter on, and I just turn it around a little bit by hand. Make sure that that's seated on the spindle. And probably an obvious note too, when you do this, uh, make sure that your hands are uh, scrupulously clean. You don't want your skin oils or whatever to uh, prematurely age the belt or whatever. Uh, because uh, well taken care of, 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 these belts will last quite a long time. Okay, here's the first motor test. And we want to test the speeds. Okay, now I'm at the point where uh, everything seems to be working right and I'm probably going to uh, hook it up to my uh, thrift store stereo and speakers and see if, if everything's working. Uh, another thing I can uh, tell you about 
Uh, as far as reconditioning, maybe a, a hazy scratched up uh, cover like this. I just use some of this kind of uh, plastic uh, polish. You can get various kinds of this at like automotive store. Kind of the same principle as uh, if you've ever had to polish your headlight lenses on your car uh, to remove that, that yellowing or haze or scratches. And as far as the uh, <coughs> audio plugs, um, I just use some of this kind of uh, contact cleaner uh, to recondition those so I know I'm getting a really good uh, uh, signal to the amplifier. Okay, I brought the turntable back to the system that's going to be working with. Um, one other thing that you may have that you don't want to forget when you put the platter on it may have a little snap ring. You want to put that back on. And then I'll just put the mat on. That. And one thing I did notice unusual about this turntable, I've never had one like this where it did not have a separate uh, uh, ground wire so it must have an internal uh, ground inside the cabinet or something um, but now I'm I have a record and I would suggest if you do this use a test record um, one that's in good condition but not something that you uh, um, will uh, shed a tear if it if your uh, tone arm or something skates across and and puts a big scratch in it or something um, get something that will sound that you know sounds good, but something that you're not really um, thrilled with, uh, you know, keeping. <laughs> okay, here's the whole setup. My eight dollars a piece Allegro speakers. My seven dollar. A Sherwood amplifier and my seven dollar turntable with the investment of the fifteen dollars for the belt. I also uh, hooked up this. I used to have this in my car before I bought an in dash uh, CD player. Uh, but first, let's uh, show you the amp or listen to the amp. I feel terrible and guilty about when I'm uh, distrustful and I shouldn't be. Um. Before I uh, <clears throat> installed the turntable, I bought some, it didn't have any like rubber uh, feet pads. I bought some at a hardware store, some uh, kind of like these rubber pucks that you would put like table legs under. And uh, to attach them, I had some Velcro stuck them on there. I checked the level of the turntable. It was just fine. Okay, here we go. Oh! 
It's alright. Thanks for watching.